Welcome back. Um, this is uh, this is Dave Brown and Simon Drake. I'm the uh, chief industry officer here at uh, at Austin Labs, and Simon is the CEO here at Austin Labs. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about rationalizing your business down to the components that actually make you money. Um, so, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, product or you know UPC rationalization, customer rationalization. And then finally, you know, um, whether it be animal class or brands, uh, you know, essentially rationalizing your product mix. Um, so I'm going to start off with talking a little bit about the product code rationalization. This is something that, that we did a lot of in, in my business past. Um, we, we actually were doing it at, at one point um, biannually. Um, and we would go in and, and look at various factors about which product codes were, were, you know, to be kept. But, um, you know, you have to basically set some metrics for your business and, and say, look, this is, this is a, you know, a minimum volume that I'm, I'm wanting to accept, you know, maybe it's a hundred thousand pounds a year for a product code. And if it's below a hundred thousand pounds, you get rid of it or, you know, and, and for your business, if you have smaller volumes, maybe it's 10,000 pounds. Um, but uh, then there's also things like, you know, is this product code continually making, you know, making me lose money? Why would you keep selling something that you're losing money on? And then finally, you have to really think about, is this part of a, you know, even if this product code doesn't do a lot for us as a company, is it part of a mix? You know, and a lot of times you get into this with Japanese business or other international business where, you know, they, they're buying huge amounts of product from you and they require, you know, a hundred thousand pounds of this one tenderloin coat that, that drives you crazy to produce, but it's part of the mix. Um, so, you know, you have to take all those things into account, but the number one thing I would say is that go at this with, um, with a pretty hefty ax, you know, you, you want to, you want to make sure that you're, you're not running a process like this and just getting a little bit of benefit out of it. So that's a little bit about product code rationalization. Let's talk a little bit about brands, Simon. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, to, to your point, there's salespeople never want to start cutting options to their customers. Obviously, you want to deliver your customer what, what they want. Um, and, you know, whether that's a variety of brands, um, animal class programs, things like that. But there's, there needs to be that recognition. What does it do to the complexity in the supply chain? When you have slow moving items, they're the ones often that are the hardest to model. Um, a, a brand that doesn't have a lot of sales but adds complexity to the plant floor. What's that real cost to the business? Is it justified? Are you passing the cost on to your customers? And are there some other options that you can, you can provide to give the customer what they want at a much better value? Um, and so really looking and understanding and thinking about what complexity is a brand, a, a, a animal program bringing to the business? What is it doing to the plant? Is it actually creating additional churn, cost, and maybe an inability to meet some orders? And you know, to your point, you, 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 it's not an easy decision to make, um, but understanding that impact is important. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of those brands and, and uh, you know, animal classes and things like that become someone's baby. And, it, you know, it gets to be really difficult for, for them to give that up. Um, and, and so, you know, you can imagine that it's, it's, um, it's tough to, for, you know, the person that really marketed those or, or really fought to have that as part of the company. Um, sometimes they really fight to hold on to those. But you really have to take uh, a hard hard line about it. The final thing I would I would uh, talk about in this is customer rationalization. And the, everything that we just said about brands and products really does apply in, in customers as well. You know, sometimes a customer's just not worth selling to anymore. They're, they're either low uh, margin or they're very, very time consuming, or maybe they don't pay their bills on time. Um, you know, those are customers that you just don't need around. And then, of course, you know, low volume customers, um, you know, it kind of conforms to that old 90-10 rule where, 
you know, you spend 90% of your time on 10% of the, you know, these small volumes, you know, problematic customers. Sometimes it's just best to go ahead and let those go and, and streamline your business. So I think that's about it. All, all the time we have today to talk about rationalization, but, um, but uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Dave.